And welcome back to the morning show coming up on uh, 650 Chemist Corner Time. Jesse Miller from the U of I is back. More carbon dioxide experiments. That's right. I know that uh, Don and Gretchen did a couple of things uh, about a month ago, and, mm -hmm. and they did some showed some properties of carbon dioxide. And I was going to talk a little bit more, and then on the second half, we're going to kind of wrap it all together yeah. and do the dike. A big, a big experiment That's outside. Right. we got to move right. it outside. But first, <laughs> got to get this out. That's right. So carbon dioxide, you know, it's an important gas uh, in our lives. We uh, expel it um, as, a, as a waste product, and plants use it to uh, make oxygen. Sure. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship we have with plants, which is kind of cool. Um, carbon dioxide uh, is about... It's less than 1% in the atmosphere, but it still is a, a gas that they're concerned with for greenhouse gases mm -hmm. and things. Of course, the biggest greenhouse gas is water. Right. But uh, carbon dioxide is right up there in the, in the, uh, the problems they have. But, so we're going to talk a little bit about carbon dioxide. And one of the things about carbon dioxide is you don't see this. This is dry ice. Okay, This is frozen carbon dioxide, and I think they showed this as well. And the reason why I'm moving it in my hand is because it's rather it's cold. cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cold. But the thing about, that's interesting about this is it goes straight from, uh, it goes straight from uh, a solid at at this at atmospheric pressure, at our atmospheric pressure, goes straight from a solid into a gas. It doesn't go through a liquid phase. Okay. We can see that a little bit easier if we just drop one here in some oh. in some water. You can see now it's going straight into gas. It doesn't uh, it doesn't melt. It is more dense than water, which is somewhat interesting as far as ice goes. Water ice, of course, floats on top, but uh, carbon dioxide sure. is more dense than water. So you can see the the, the carbon dioxide coming off there. It's kind of cool. It's not all that terribly cool. But anyway, one of the things that, uh, that people like to talk about or environmentalists like to talk about is acid rain. And there's a, kind of a misconception out there about what acid rain actually is. It turns out that all rain is acidic. Okay. Okay. And the reason why it's acidic is because of carbon dioxide. Okay. And when they talk about acid rain, they're actually talking about uh, when you get sulfates in the air, then it even lowers the pH even further. But we can see that carbon dioxide is acidic. Right now, this is tap water. And the Urbana, Champaign-Urbana city water um, is basic. The blue is, is really basic, and then yellow and red is acidic. Okay. Uh, and this is a universal indicator I put in here. Okay. Um, if I drop some carbon dioxide in here, it should turn this acidic. And we'll see that here in just a second, because it forms carbolic acid as we're going through that. So I put a little, this is just city water, I put a little bit of universal indicator in it, and as it bubbles away, you can see the oh, color it's going change. it's green to yellow. Wow. Green to yellow, and, and you can see this is uh, some sodium hydroxide, which is a base. And if I add some of that in there, I can get it to turn back to blue, and then the carbon dioxide just keeps chugging away. Goes back to the cycle. And it's just going right through it back into its cycle. So you can see that it's acidic. Now, why is this important? Well, like I said, you have kind of rainwater is acidic all the time. It's about a pH of about 5, 6 to 6. Point oh, something like that. And for caves, now this is all going to wrap together when we talk, uh, to, to how caves are formed. We have a lot of limestone here in Illinois, and uh, limestone dissolves in acid. Okay. Okay, so we have this uh, acidic rain that's coming through. It's dissolving the limestone. You get this big cave that forms. And then as the water uh, drips down, it's full of carbon dioxide, and it's under pressure. Okay, so as that releases the pressure when it enters into the big cavern that it's already gone through, then it forms calcium carbonate. And we're going to see that here. Uh, this is lime, this is calcium oxide, and this is the uh, same thing. But when I drop the carbon dioxide in here, you can see it's turning white and milky. Mm -hmm. That's from calcium carbonate forming, oh, and this okay. is how stalactites form. Oh, there you go. Okay. That makes sense. And that's what we got this time. <laughs> Very cool. We're going to wrap it up a little bit more with the carbon dioxide when I show you the Mentos and Diet Coke. Uh, okay. That's, uh, uh, I've reaction. heard pretty explosive. Yeah, it's kind of neat. All right, Jesse.